It's your God Call with Reverend Bill. Let's play a game of tag. I'm going to put some words on you, and you can feel free to accept them or not. Ready? Here we go. You are love. Peaceful. Harmonious. Healthy. Joyous. Free. Prosperous. Creative. Wise. Divinely guided. Balanced. And loved. Now, if there are any of those that you don't like, please feel free to discard. And otherwise, feel free to own them. This day was a hard one, and I'd rather forget everything about it. When I lay down my head, but something in my heart is beckoning to me. To sit with it in silence so that I may see this is a blessing, a sacred lesson. The reason I am here, and as I grow, may blessings flow, restoring love. Where once was fear, these sacred blessings of love. The lessons are the blessings, the gifts along the way, there's everything to gain. What they have to say, so listen to their wisdom. You lean into the wind and welcome them with open arms like a long lost friend. These are the blessings, our sacred lesson. The reasons we are here, and as we grow, our blessings flow. Restoring love where once was fear, these sacred blessings of love. Whether fact or fiction, it's neither here nor there. All that matters in the end is if we dare. The hard one lessons as they speak through us in prayer. Our blessings, our sacred lessons, the reasons we are here. Watch as we grow, how our blessings flow. Restoring love where once was fear. These sacred lessons, our blessings, and they're how God holds us near. These sacred blessings of Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you. What a wonderful notion. Blessings. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's kind of like having a discussion mint. Uh, <laughs> same kind of thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, as Lerner and Lowe said in Camelot, tra-la, it's May. I'm not going to continue that. So good morning, New Thought Philadelphia. Welcome to springtime and to May. We get to talk a little bit more about that later. You guys know the drill for having a Zoom celebration. Uh, to, Basically, keep your microphone muted, except when you're sharing or when we're just going to get raucous. So let's do that now. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. You can repeat after me. I open myself to love. I, I open, open myself, I open myself, myself to, love. to love. Open myself to springtime. 
I open I open myself, myself to joy. Time. 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 I open myself to joy. I open, I open myself, myself to joy. joy. I am blossoming. I, I am, am blossoming. blossoming. And so it is. And so it is. So it is. You can go ahead and mute your microphone one more time as I remind you that New Thoughts Philadelphia is an open and loving community of spiritual adventurers, welcoming each person to experience their divine nature in an empowering space of unconditional love. So whatever path you've been on, whatever brought you through our Zoom door today, wherever you're heading next, we have been expecting you. And welcome home. We don't have a really long list of beliefs or creed. We believe that there's one power, love, intelligence, or force that creates everything, including each of us, and that we're each using that same power, love, intelligence, or force to create our lives according to our beliefs. So we like to say around here, your new life begins with a new thought. So if you have a cell phone, I am tremendously proud. Um, if you have a, a ticker tape, uh, or a teletype uh, or another device that might be making some noise that's left over from an earlier era. You can turn that off, make it go shush for the next hour or so, so that we can focus within. Um, <clears throat> I'm Reverend Bill Marcioni. Our music today is by the amazingly talented Deb Chamberlain, and our practitioner is Joe Catanzaro, RSCP, who will begin us today with a practical prayer, which is how we begin everything. Good morning, everyone. Can you... Um... Turn within, let go of the getting here, the technology. And as Reverend Dr. Bill just said, there is one power presence, one love, one intelligence that has created everything. And that same power lives in each one of us. It is wisdom, it is love, it is life, it is spirit. It is the divine energy that lives in each, inside each one of us. Whether we recognize it or not, it's there. It's there for our use. It's there so that we can connect with that power and use it to create our own lives but we have to recognize it. We have to share it, share it with everything and everyone we come in contact with. Allow that power to work through us. It's all good. It brings only good. And I know that each one here brings something unique and wonderful to share with our organization and with the world. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for everyone here, for everything we bring and share and give. I'm grateful for knowing the truth that we are that one power and presence. So I claim all of that good for each one here. All the love, wisdom, joy, peace, harmony that we can imagine and 10% more. So I claim it, I allow it, and I accept it. And I release my word to the law that from the beginning of time has always said yes, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Joe. So... I love to hear about people whose prayers have been working out in their lives. This is prayer works. And if anybody has one that you would like to share, go ahead and Breen, raise your hand. <laughs> you can do it either digitally or in the screen there. So Breen's first and then Joe. And uh, so what's uh, going on prayer wise? So I've got um, two. One's kind of a proxy prayer that, that lends into the other prayer. Um, so uh, a few weeks ago or so, Jane saw a, an announcement or a call for an art show um, I don't even know the organization, but it was around women's, uh, empowering women and women's issues. And she got inspired and created some work that she submitted. It's a juried show and she was accepted into the show. So that's a prayer work. Um, and then we had to, um, get the work ready to, uh, to show. So last night we were, um, framing it. We took some other work apart and put it in, it was a whole thing of putting this stuff together. 
Um, we had to get the paper on the back and we were almost out of double-sided tape, which we use. And Jane said, oh, I'm crossing my fingers. I hope there's enough. I said, no, we're not, no, we're not crossing our fingers. We're affirming and knowing. <laughs> um, and the one roll ran out and we're like, oh, oh, and I'm like, wait. And I went and looked at my box of stuff and I had another roll. So boom, I affirmed yeah. and I knew. And, um, the, the wonderful piece of art that we're going to be, so she is showing, uh, we got it all framed and ready to go. Fantastic. Takes a village. I love when that happens. Congratulations. And to you too, Jane. Uh, Joe Catanzaro, up next. So we, last uh, Thursday, we moved my dad to assisted living. And Rena, I think I was more hoping than affirming, but it was a little bit of both. So it went really well. I, I, I was very happy, very grateful, somewhat surprised. Um, and I'm taking it one day at a time. I went out again. He, he did really well. He didn't, I was expecting him to say no and put up a fuss, but he did not. I went out Saturday for a little bit. He seemed fine. And I'm going out today. No, Friday I went out and I'm going out today. See how he is. That's beautiful. That's a story long time in coming. And wonderful, wonderful to hear that. Uh, Linda Francis. You're still muted. Yeah. There you go. Good morning, everybody. So everybody here knows I pet sit. And this was at two pet sits ago because I haven't been home now since March 23rd or something like that. But I'm home today for six days. Yay. Um, anyway, there, at my two pet sits ago, I had an issue with treats and the dogs. And anyway, so every, this is like in seconds. I had a treat for each dog and one dog dropped the treat out of her mouth and she went to get it and her brother lost his mind and went after her and they were fighting. And I was like, it, again, it was seconds. And I'm like, what do I do? I know I'm not sticking my hand in here. What am I going to do? I used my foot that didn't work. I clapped my hands that didn't work. And so it was like, again, seconds. And I didn't really have the conscious time to think, well, I should do a prayer here, but I'm like, okay. I took a big breath. All of a sudden it was like, grab his collar. <laughs> so I grabbed his collar and pulled him away. But I mean, it wasn't like a conscious prayer where I sat down and put things into words, but I was definitely asking for help and, and it worked. And now I know when I go and give treats, I have to have my arms outstretched at opposite ends of the kitchen and not doing that again. But anyway, it was great because it could have turned into something really bad. I put him outside, she was bleeding, but I fixed it all up. But yeah, that was, but it was helpful. I got the word and I did it, followed the suit and it worked. So Perfect. Yeah. And there's, there's not actually a timetable in the turning to the infinite and having the, the, that next step show up because it's possible to just be in that situation and be paralyzed and watch the dogs tear each other to pieces, which, you know, a scale of good to bad would be, I'm going to call it bad. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't fun, but you know, it worked out. And again, seconds, and it just was like fight, you know, drop, fight, 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 pull and it was over. So anyway, but it was definitely a, an, a prayer story, but it wasn't like a conscious prayer. So at least I wasn't aware of it in my head, but it, yeah. it worked. It worked. Yep. And some of them start with, Oh God. <laughs> well, that was pretty much it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Christine joy up next. Then Sarah. Oh, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so I've been dealing with the post concussion syndrome, which is a more common, chronic form of concussion and um you know when that happens it affects everything your sleep your eating your ability to sleep definitely my mood um and i went and i was having troubles with um my pcp and one of my doctors said look you should change PCPs. This PCP isn't for you. So I changed my PCP <laughs> and I love my new PCP. And um, I had a second opinion with the neurologist 
and that went really well. And he told me to get back to basics with my spirituality. And um, instead of being exasperated and overwhelmed about the things that I can't do, um, and told me to, to, you know, write a gratitude list of all the things that I can do, no matter how little. So I started there and, um, you know, just started writing a gratitude list and talking in the mirror to myself, being kind with myself and not frustrated with the fact that like, I just can't do everything that I want to do. And I don't know, I'm feeling really positive and strong and joyful and um, happy and at peace. And I'm not like, completely stressed out of my gourd um, that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah. yeah what what wonderful guidance start where you are take a step then take another step then take another step and see where you wind up yeah thank you thank you sarah um i'll be i'll try to be quick so mine is uh the results of the ongoing practical prayer to be surrounded by community in more ways than one. And it's um, like a two pronged thing. Over a year ago, I bought tickets for a uh, like a music festival that's going to be in Las Vegas and it's in two weeks. And there was a lot of uh, questions on whether or not the music festival was real or not. And I bought two tickets, not knowing if it was real and not knowing who I would go with. And just like a year ago, I was like, no, I'm ha- this is happening. I'm going to go. And so then uh, two weeks ago, I realized it's a month away. I don't have anyone to go with. I haven't made any plans. Part of me was like, maybe I'll just go on my own. And I brought it up with my community at work. And um, my boss came down really hard and was like a hard no. You can't go to Las Vegas by yourself. This is a you're in a global pandemic. You're not going to do that. And uh it was like a, a, a tense moment between the two of us. And then he called me like an hour later and he was like, you know what, Sarah, I thought about it and you work really hard and you do deserve to, you know, live your life and do the things that you want to do. And he was like, so hear me out, find a person to go with you. And if you don't find a person to go with you, I'll go with you. And I'll buy the person's plane tickets because this is a very last minute thing. And it can be like my gift to you for being an awesome person. And so I like got really giddy and very excited. And I was like, yes, let's do this. And um, I have a new friend, part of building the community that I'm trying to have that um, I, I just, a light bulb went off in my head and I was like, it's Martine. Let me ask Martine if she wants to traipse across the country with me and go to this mystery festival, whether it will be in existence or not. And uh, I couldn't have asked a better person. Martine is uh, coming out of some wake in her past and uh, it somehow, and you know, I'm not taking credit. The universe is the credit somehow it touched her in such a way that opened up something in her that then by uh, receiving this big, incredible gift, it shifted her thought process into like a receiving thought process. And then more and more and more good just like fell into her space as well that helped her get away from everything that was in the rear view mirror. And then the last bit of this puzzle is Martine's boyfriend, Ed, came to my house when we were doing the big build all the furniture. And he noticed that I had outdoor speakers on the roof. And then he was like, Hey, let me come over and help you get these outdoor speakers working. So it's just this like beautiful, like weaving of, you know, everything. It's all one. It can happen. I took a chance. I wasn't sure. And then like, I was vulnerable enough to bring it up with my work people and they were wonderful enough to be like, let's make this happen. And I attribute it to a year and a half ago, two years ago, COVID's weird, doing the class with everyone and making the intention that I want to be like surrounded by a beautiful community of people that love me and I love them. And it 
it just works upward spiral. So that's, that's my true. big long story. I'll stop talking now. I'm really sorry. So that sorry. Is, no, don't, don't apologize. That is absolutely beautiful. And I love stories like that because it makes it so obvious that if you had tried to figure it out and write the script, you would never have been able to come up with that. So what you did was you planted the seed, you set the intention, you opened yourself up and you followed the guidance and the pieces then fit together. Because when we try to work it out, then we limit the way that the universe can do it. And we just say, I want to have community. I want to go to this, this festival. Then your boss offered to go with you. I mean, and they, <laughs> really, really? That yeah, who would have written that one into guys. the script? <laughs> That's, and because you're awesome and we know that. I love it. Thank you so much. A reminder of uh, prayer and the power of prayer and how it works and can be transformational. Um, I love when we get to present the graduates of a Beyond Limits class, which we're doing uh, a little bit later this morning. And so there's some more stories of transformation coming. I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah now, who is also our host today. Yes. Good morning again, everyone. Oh, okay, Katniss. Bye. Sorry. This bouquet of information is on our website at newthoughtphilly.org and in our weekly e-newsletter. Please sign up on the website so we can keep in touch. Twice a day, we have a community check-in and meditation on Zoom. Everyone is welcome. They're inspiring and fun and quick, less than 15 minutes from start to finish. Our spring class is No Mud, No Lotus, led by Master Forgiveness teacher, Reverend Dr. Michelle Wadley. It combines the heart of forgiveness with the strength of spiritual principle. Six Wednesday evenings beginning this week, registration is open. There will be a spiritual practices class on Tuesday evenings this summer from June 14th to August 23rd. It's a great way to bring more spiritual awareness to this warm and bright time of the year. World Labyrinth Day is the first Saturday in May. Join us to walk as one at the Bryn Mawr College at 11 o'clock next Saturday. Episode 47 of Reverend Bill's Practical Prayer Podcast is Prosperity and Abundance. Listen on the website or subscribe on Apple, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher. You can watch the live stream of the recording session on Monday at 1 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Follow our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and join the 926 spiritual adventurers in our group on meetup.com. The Power of Eight Intention Circle meets on Zoom every Monday at 6.30 p.m. A new eight-week cycle starts tomorrow. Contact Sandy for more information. The Women's Circle meets on Zoom on Thursday at Oh, the, the last Thursday of the month at 7.30, which would have been last Thursday. Sorry, I'm messing myself up. Contact Sandy or Joe for more info on that. The Unexpected Income Club is underway. Join the club to prove prosperity principles in the laboratory of your life. Sign up on the website and say the practical prayer every day and donate 10% of the extra money that shows up for you. The other 90% is God's gift to you. I just remembered I got my deposit on the hotel back. So that's unexpected income. I have to do that. Okay. Coming back to this. We are grateful for your tax deductible donations by PayPal, check, Venmo, or Cash App. Thank you to the production team and presenters who make our Zoom celebrations work and have fun doing it. There's a short technical rehearsal before the celebration on Sunday. Join, to join the team, please contact Carla Ann. Next Sunday is online. Reverend Bill explores the causative nature of our thinking and the birth of a new idea with techniques that we can use to fine tune our thinking and the life we are creating. Live original music by Anna W. Reverend Bill and the practitioners offer professional spiritual coaching and practical prayer by appointment. After the celebration, Joe will be available for a quick miracle in a minute prayer at no charge. We'll leave the Zoom meeting open for people to talk amongst ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. One of my favorite things to do is um, on Saturdays when we write the announcements out, uh, we put the number of spiritual adventurers who are part of the meetup. And uh, I love when we show this, the 
the, the screen on Sunday morning and the number has already gone up. So actually there are 927 in the meetup now. Uh, just a way to connect. This is a time when we welcome our first time visitors. I'm looking through the list of people and there are no first time visitors. So we did not get that new person from the meetup to join us this morning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna all rub our hands together and gonna love each other, recognizing the divinity that each of us is and that we're seeing in everybody else. Feel that warmth? You are the bright lights of God's love. Thank you, thank you, thank you for shining that light and sharing your love with our group today. Blessings and welcome home. So as, uh, as Deb does the next song, let's go ahead and go into gallery view and make eye contact with the people we're in community with together. Deb. These holy waters, they flow through me, through my sons and daughters for eternity. These holy waters hear every call. These holy waters, they bless us all. I know I am a vessel of love. I am a vessel of love. I open up my heart and soul. I open up my mind for all your goodness, truth, and beauty to come into my life. I am a vessel of love, yeah. I am a vessel of light. These holy waters, they flow through me, through my sons and Thank you, Deb. Uh, Carolyn is going to lead us in the flames of faith this morning. We perform this ceremony to acknowledge that all people and all faiths come from the one power, love, intelligence, which we call spirit or God. We honor the richness that comes from our shared diversity and bless the interwoven energy of the divine feminine and masculine. We light the first candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the second candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the third candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the fourth candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the fifth candle for all forms of Buddhism, 
honoring the Four Noble Truths and the Path of Compassion. We light the sixth candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the seventh candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. We light the eighth candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the ninth candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. As we light the healing candle, please put silently into the light the names of anyone or any place you wish to have experienced the healing flame of God's eternal love. Blessed be. Uh, our reading today is brought to us by Hannah. Good morning. Um, this reading uh, comes from Science of Mind magazine for Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. It's written by Reverend Dr. David Goldberg. Um, vibration. How you vibrate is what the universe echoes back to you in every moment. A quote by Panache. Science tells us that all forms come, that all form comes from one substance made manifest through vibration. This further helps us to see the relationship of the word to the formless and teaches us, us the in, indestructibility and in, eternality of energy and cosmic stuff. A quote from the Science of Mind. The law of vibration might not be as well known as the law of attraction. However, the law of vibration serves as the foundation for the law of attraction. It helps to remember that everything is energy. Science through quantum physics continues to show us this. When we go down to a subatomic level, we don't find matter, but pure energy. Physicist John Hagelin calls this the unified field or matrix. Others talk about pure potentiality. The law of vibration states that everything in the universe moves and vibrates. Everything is vibrating at one speed or another. Nothing rests. Everything you see around you is vibrating at one frequency or another, and so are you. However, your frequency is different from other things in the universe, and that's why it seems like you are separated from what you see around you. People, animals, plants, trees, and so on. In truth, you are not separated. You are, in fact, living in an ocean of energy, as we all are. We are all connected at the lowest level, also known as the unified field. Everything has its own vibrational frequency. The table, the car, the picture frame, the rock, even our thoughts and feelings. It's all governed by the law of vibration. And the affirmation is, I consciously elevate my vibration as I deepen my connection with the divine. Thank you, Hannah. So I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, we finished a Beyond Limits class and uh, had the opportunity to present the graduates. Um, several of uh, the students who were in Beyond Limits are here today. So I wanna just give them all a shout out. We're also gonna share a couple of the projects uh, that were created for the class. And Beyond Limits is pretty much the only class we have that talks about something negative because it talks about limits. And as we say, when you pray about loneliness, you get more loneliness. If you pray about limits, you get more limits. But that's the one that we make the exception for. And this is a <laughs> class that uh, um, Roger Teal created uh, out of Mile High in, uh, in Denver some time ago. And the reason they call it Beyond Limits is because when we're first getting into this teaching, we have been experiencing limits in our lives all along. So as we begin to learn this new stuff, it becomes transformational for us. So uh, the students who were in the class uh, who I do not see here with us today uh, were um, Adam Webb, uh, who's working for another church. That's another prayer work story for him. And uh, Elaine J. Rowe, I do not see Elaine here as well. Uh, I don't know if Bill Falk is over Christine Joy's uh, shoulder or not. Uh, sometimes they're in the same camera shot there. And uh, I believe that I saw Carrie here before. Is Did, did Carrie stick around? Uh, Carrie was here, but maybe coming back. Um, 
And Christine uh, Joy was in the class, uh, Kathy Spock as well, and Linda Francis. And just some wonderful transformational uh, experiences that happen. And I'm only gonna, I'm gonna share a smattering of the, the projects. Everybody had something different to share. What we do in the class is the, the final project, there's no exam. The final project is to create something that expresses uh, the spiritual transformation growth that has happened during this class. So I'm gonna share a couple of these. And uh, used to be, we had to invite people to come back in and share them. But since we're on Zoom and we could record it, I just went ahead and did that. This is uh, this is Elaine Jero talking about her uh, her class. And actually, let me double check and make sure that I shared that properly. Yep, I want to share the sound as well. There we go. So you guys can see the process of what I made, and then I can show you what I make and explain it. Enchanting paper. So oh, I'm going to hold this up. Can you guys see this? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is what uh, that turned into. Um, so the process is um, this paint method and it's called um, liquid pour. So I thought it um, kind of could show what I learned in the class is you take a mixture of all these paints and they're all in one cup. And um, um, you could kind of see how I turned it over. And then even though they were all individually put in one by one, and then they all just kind of spread out. And eventually if I had kept that playing, it fills the whole entire uh, canvas. Um, but you can see each color, um, you know, there's all different kinds of swirls and all different kinds of, you know, shapes. And so each paint, colors expressing themselves uniquely, but they all started out as one all together. Um, so I thought that was kind of a cool idea to show how we're all one, but we're all, you know, and just, I wish you guys could have seen it in person, but that's the best I could do. So um, that's my project. And that's your project. And the thing that I love about the Beyond Limits class is that everybody's projects are just, they're so, uh, they're so different. Um, I'll share another one with you. Um, so my project, I took kind of a blend of some of the different things we've done in class that I really enjoyed. Um, one of them, and I know it's more powerful in person is when we were doing a meditation where we were all instructed to kind of look into each other's eyes and to see that presence. Um, and another one was when we were kind of doing our affirmations and drawing stars each time we were saying it and kind of just, it was like a, almost like a rosary kind of thing. We're going through and making those prayers constant. Um, and so what I did is, uh, I looked in the mirror at myself and uh, recited that affirmation I had, which was, I am God, I am love, I am peace, I am hope, just kind of over and over. And that brought, you know, it takes you out of your mind because you can't help but focus on the reality in front of you and to see yourself instead of just being inside yourself, looking out, but kind of seeing your reflection. Um, so I did kind of a self portrait I didn't do it while I was looking in the mirror because that is so hard to do. So I took a, a screenshot of myself and then drew it. And then on the outside, I kind of blended it in like we did with the stars. I wrote down the affirmations over and over and kind of created a uh, view of that. So this is here. And so it's written across here and then um, I just wrote them over and over again around here to kind of create that shadow to uh, add a little depth to it, I guess. I love the different ways that the creativity shows up and, and the way that the meaning 
of the spiritual practice, the principle that we're talking about, you know, planting seeds and creating newness and inviting the infinite to, to create for us. And it just shows up in so many different ways. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the presentation from, uh, from Carrie. Anyway, so this is supposed to be a tree. Um, I really, because I really like the symbolism of planting the seed, harvesting it, and then letting it grow. You know, so down here, I haven't saran wrap because I use rice as like the seeds. I uh, wrote things that were indicative of like the seeds I used to plant before the class. You know, like uh, I'm unworthy, I'm not enough, it's my fault, I don't know, I'm stuck. Um, isolation, avoidance, judgment, you know, kind of a lot of these negative things. Um, and uh, it's also, I kind of like the three parts is also indicative of I, that for the forgiveness prayer that we did. I found that to be so powerful. So this, um, I released my belief in being stuck. That was the first part. So that's kind of like what this, that part symbolizes. Um, and then the middle part is like the journey part. Um, the trunk of the tree is supposed to be a river. So that kind of is symbolizing, you know, um, thought, kind of the harvesting and then the results. So in the harvest part, like it's because it, it's all, you know, it's all a, a flow and all being one. And, you know, it's kind of what you put out there is what you, you know, what you put in is what you'll get out. So anyway, so I put things, basically all the things that like I learned in the class or like new practices I have, you know, to like bring about new, new results. So I have like um, practical prayer and writing, meditation, um, movement, like just, you know, physical activity, visualization, um, connection, nature, like spiritual study, you know, so, that, so these things that are in the river that will take me toward, it's easier to, then the top, it's kind of falling apart, but it's supposed to be, you know, the, the tree or the flower, like the blossoming into the result. So um, these are the things that I learned. Oh, and I wanted to relate it to my, um, like the, the forgiveness thing I said, like the bottom would symbolize, you know, I release my belief in being stuck. I release my need for avoidance. That's like now it's a river I'm flowing, so I'm not avoiding. And then um, I am grateful God is the freedom. So that's where like, you know, the top part of the tree is kind of supposed to symbolize that freedom and things that I've learned. Um, like we are all like, there are these, these new beliefs, I guess. Um, the universe says, yes. It's kind of hard to see them because I wrote them weird. Uh, when you believe magic happens, inner divinity, you know, just these things that have blossomed because of um, the class. All the projects are different and it's wonderful to see the changes and the, the differences that, that what happens. Uh, Bill Falk, who's a professional magician, was in the class. And so he started uh, creating a magic routine that shows um, how the, 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 this creative process that we're talking about works. Um, the video of it didn't come out because in the astounding part of the magic trick, all you can see in the recording is everybody being astounded rather than what he actually did. So that will have to, uh, that will get to wait for another time. Um, Christine Joy uh, created a, um, uh, a collage in Canva and that's the first page of her collage. And a quote from Bruce Lee with the pictures. This is the aspects of God that we used in class. Um, there are a bunch uh, of these pages here. And rather than go through the entire thing now, what I did is I put it into the chat. It's on Canva. So you can go ahead and click through and look at her entire presentation. There are uh, 36 of those uh, collage images in there. And uh, some of them have great quotes in them and uh, definitely very cool stuff. Um, and the last one that I want to share with you today is, well, it's, she gives her own excuse about it. So I'm just going to go and let that, let her do that for herself. This is very short, but I haven't written poetry since I was 10 years old. So I tried to write a poem. So that's what I'm going to say. It's very short. 
but I think it it explains why I feel that the class has helped me through some dark times. It says, bring me closer to the divinity in myself. Bring me closer to spirit. The light comes through the soul. Take away the shadows. Face the light. It is bright. God's creation. Amen. Yeah. Congratulations to all of the students for the class. Uh, Adam Webb, Bill Falk, Christine Joy Weber, Elaine J. Rowe, Kathy Spock, Carrie Stickel, Kevin Ahern, and Linda Francis. You guys are awesome and it's wonderful. And um, this new thought teaching is very powerful. And just by exposing yourself to the group, you get some of it. And by doing the practical prayer work with the uh, miracle in a minute, the urgent prayer sessions after uh, class, you get that a little bit. And uh, we can keep dipping our toe and the real transformation, the real growth happens in classes. So as my friend Joanne McFadden at New Thought New York says, get your ass in class. And I will leave with that and turn it over to Deb Chamberlain. <laughs> wow, those are amazing. Every single one of them. So inspiring. And um, this song is right in keeping with the same message. It's called Rise. I wrote this song last summer. So enjoy. <laughs> I thought I had faced it all, every challenge, every fall. But clouds never leave the sky forever. So as the storm comes round again, I welcome my old friend. Cause we're gonna ride this way together and we will rise we will rise in spite of the falls in fact because of it all we will rise we will rise like birds Soaring on the wind, we will rise again. So we keep keeping on, growing wiser, growing strong, living life with open hearts and open eyes. I'm here for you. You're here for me, that is how we're meant to be, it's the only way we will ever rise, and we will rise, we will rise, in spite of the falls, in fact because of it all. It's where you have to be to hear the call And nothing's meant to keep us down Even the road rises up as our feet touch the ground So we can rise, rise In spite of the fall
Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. Yeah. So today is the first of May. It is May Day. And that means uh, it's, an, it's another rite of spring. We started talking about this on the 20th of March on the uh, spring equinox, because there are a sequence of uh, spring return of the, the, the warmth, return of the light festivals that go on. And depending on what your latitude is, uh, sometimes the warmth it comes back earlier than it does uh, in the farther up north. So it starts the spring equinox. That's actually the balance point where the days are getting longer and the temperatures are getting warmer. And so that's the beginning of nice. Easter is in there someplace too. That's another pagan festival of, um, uh, <laughs> of springtime. Uh, don't tell the people who celebrate Easter. Uh, same thing with, uh, with May Day. It's the first of May. It's the Maypole, dancing around the Maypole. It's about getting outside. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, in Trala, it's May, the lusty month of May, which came from Camelot. Um, this is you know, the notion that's been around for a long time. There are things that are blossoming. There are things that are sprouting. There are seeds that are being planted with the intention of harvest. And that's something that we continue to celebrate on May Day. Um, I don't believe in my life I've ever danced around a maypole. It's possible that I did once. Um, I've certainly understood what the deal is with that, with the weaving and the over and the under, but you know, it kind of gets confused in my mind playing tetherball when I was a kid, which was <laughs> the same sort of a pole, but uh, a little more violent. The idea in planting seeds is that's, that's the process, is to be able to prepare the soil and plant the seeds. But the idea is to have a harvest. The idea is for that growth to happen, for that germination, for that seed to take hold, for the growth to begin to happen, to that, for that sprout to come up, for that newness to show up in the world, and then bring that goodness to us. So as we're planting seeds, and this goes for gardening or farming or spiritual growth, as we are planting the seed, we have our eye on where that's going to lead eventually. And in the same way that the farmer doesn't know exactly how tall the corn is going to be or which of the seeds is going to germinate, there's the idea of having a field of corn and we're going to plant the corn and grow and, and, and work the process. So we get to set the intention for that experience that we want to have, plant the seed, and then do whatever is ours to do to bring that into experience and let go of everything that's not ours. So as we, you know, we use the agricultural metaphor around here a lot. When you plant the seed and you water it and you make sure that the soil is fertilized and everything is good to go, you don't dig the seed back up again three days later to make sure it's germinating. Okay, there's, there's part of it that we're involved in that we're responsible for, and there's part of it that we just need to let go of and allow the process to unfold. So that is something that works equally well in your spiritual and meditative practice. What is mine to do? What is mine to let go of? Because if we get involved and, and try and micromanage the process, we try to, to, to outguess God and figure out what we have to do because God can't handle it. We are so undermining the potential that we are open to that it's just not a good idea. It's just that it, it, it works across purposes. And by the same token, if we've got that garden bed full of tomatoes sitting out there, and we know that they need to be watered, but just sit on our purple meditation pillow and allow the infant to do the watering at its perfect schedule, then it might rain or it might not. But if it's our turn to get out there with the hose, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. And twice a day in our daily meditations, we, we, we go into some form of opening myself up to what's new, letting go of what's not mine, so that we can be guided into that next step, that next understanding. What is my next perfect step? And then take it. Knowing what that step is and not taking it doesn't accomplish anything. The fact of the matter is it is a partnership with the infinite. The reason that each of us is here is because God has need of an instrument here. And if God tells you, go water the garden or move your car or whatever, <laughs> tell, tell your work colleagues about the trip that you have planned. 
then do it. Don't do it. Do not sit there with the assumption that the infinite is going to work on this project on your behalf without you. Sometimes there's something for each of us to do. And mayday is also one of those words that has a double meaning. And I love words with double meanings. You know that. Um, mayday is uh, also a radio call, mayday, mayday, which is actually French. It means help me. Uh, when something is going wrong, uh, that's the, the, the radio call. It's mayday. And it lets everybody know, oops, there's something going on here. Heightened sense of uh, attention and alert and urgency because there might be an intervention, uh, some sort of activity that is going to be required when we hear that mayday call, when we hear that call for help. And taking that back into a spiritual practice. There are times when we in our own partnership with the infinite can understand what is ours to do. And there are other times where we need some help. God knows what I'm supposed to do next. I have no clue what I'm supposed to do next. And that's where I get to invite the help. That's where we get to go into the, the silence and say, that divine power and presence that creates everything, everything, that infinite intelligence that knows everything. I know that I am one with that. I am created by that infinite creative power. I know that that mind is my mind now. And so I open myself to that guidance. I open myself to the help. That divine power and presence, I'm claiming the help right now, the assistance and the guidance. I'm, I'm sending out my mayday call, not because I'm a failure without it, but because I don't have all the answers. And one of the things that we get to do in our particular teaching is we have somebody else we can ask for help as well. I mean, Roy's asking the infinite for the assistance. That's where that creative power is coming from. That's the one that's creating everything. But we have practitioners. We have practitioners. So if there's something that's going on in my life that I want to have experienced differently, and I can't wrap my arms around how to do the prayer or what to say or how this could possibly work, I can rent a consciousness. <laughs> I can get a practitioner who understands uh, the spiritual practice and knows how to do a prayer and is not equipped with all of my baggage and disbelief. My practitioner does not have any doubt. There certainly doesn't have the same doubts that I have about the good that's available to me. So our practitioners have our own doubts, but we have learned how to deal with them and be present for the people who we're doing prayer with. So mayday, <laughs> call on some assistance, call on a practitioner, call on somebody to help to bring that next new experience uh, into being. Because if we're in a cycle where we're planting a seed and digging it up and planting a seed and digging it up and planting a seed and digging it up, because that's what we've always done, then let's maybe talk to a practitioner who say, plant the seed and then walk over here with me. <laughs> so when you start digging again, it's not gonna be in the place that's gonna interfere with what it is that you're creating. Sometimes it's really, really simple. And something we've heard in the prayer work stories today, which we're a bunch of, and also in the stories from the Beyond Limit students about how it can work differently than we would have any right to expect it to work. And when we open ourselves up to a new possibility, that infinite creative power that creates everything can say, got it, let's, it's, it's happening this way. And then after the fact, we get, to, we get to understand how it worked, even though that's nothing that we ever possibly would have thought of ourselves. So plant a seed. Plant a seed, invite something new and wonderful in, in your life. As Reverend Joanne said, get your ass in class. There's another one starting on Wednesday. It's a forgiveness class. And if you find the forgiveness class to be intimidating, like something that you don't really want to deal with, I completely understand. And if you think, eh, I don't need to do any forgiveness work, um, sign up for the class anyway. Because I, you know, it's the joke that I make when we're in person and we're hugging is that you can't overdose on hugs. You can't overdo the prayer. And the same thing with forgiveness. Even if you've done all of your forgiveness work, if, if you have rinsed the bubbles out of that bottle for an entire lifetime, take another dive in. There might be some more bubbles in there. Because what happens as we do the spiritual work is we experience a transformation regardless of what we thought was going to happen when we started the process. 
Uh, there's a spiritual practices class that's coming up in June. Lots of possibilities. There's a practical prayer online class that starts uh, in a week or two. So take a look at the website. Find what it is that resonates with you. Take those steps. Plant some seeds. And allow the infinite to co-create something wonderful for you. Because you deserve it. You are wonderful. And so it is. That's great. I'm going to sing a song for you that I wrote recently, and it's called Who I Am in Truth, and it actually corresponds with step three of the practical prayer realization. So who I am in truth. I raise my hands up, I raise my heart up, I raise my mind up to you with every word and with every choice and with everything that I do. I'm living and breathing who I am in truth. Letting go, giving up everything I'm not. I empty out and open up my mind with each new thought that gives me life, that gives me hope, that gives me more of who I am in this moment. my hands up, I raise my heart up, I raise my mind up to you, with every word and with every choice and with everything that I do, I'm living and breathing who I am in truth, as I receive I accept this greater truth of who I am. I'm growing stronger, I'm growing wiser, trusting in this sacred plan that gives me life, that gives me hope, that gives me more of who I am in this moment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. We're going to move on with a little bit of meditation now. Um, and the words that came to my mind listening to 
everything that's been said so far was grow, bloom, flow, rise, that upward spiral. And to vibrate higher because it really is all energy. I see that in, in my line of work. I'm aware of how energy runs the body. The, you know, it just runs everything. So we can, we're going to use some of those words to kind of direct those thoughts <laughs> as we meditate. So let's get comfortable in your chair. Preferably with your feet flat on the floor, sitting up straight, whatever, whatever position you feel comfortable and connected in. So you really want to connect the head, the heart, and, and the other head, the gut, because there's a lot of connection between that brain and the brain in our heads. Want to integrate all that. So get comfortable. We're going to start with some slow, deep breaths. Take a breath in, hold it at the top, and release. One more deep breath. Take it in, hold it at the top. And release. Feel that space, feel that relaxation in your shoulder blades. One more deep breath, take it in, hold it, and release with a big sigh. Think about that wave of, a wave of energy coming up from feet all the way up through your body to your head you can think of the the, sac the first chakra the sacral chakra if you want and think of an energy wave with even the colors moving up your body through your stomach through your heart through your third eye through your your head just picture the energy wave. That upward spiral. That upward spiral of growth. That flow. And know that it comes from that, that inner beingness, that space where we connect with the divine. Really low tones, it's vibration on a really like low growl kind of rumble. Let it vibrate higher. Think about the change in pitch as it goes up. And imagine that spiral or that energy just winding up and winding up and becoming more and more energetic and a higher pitch. That's that inner energy. See if you can allow that, that energy and that beingness. Surrender that, surrender that you're doing this to that being and allow that to be the guide. Let that vibration and that connection run what you create. Allow that to bloom. 
Think of the flow, allowing things to grow. So we get the blossom and the bloom. Just think about that, picture that, let that, let those images guide your, your thoughts as we go into the quiet. Vibrate higher. We are blossoming, each of us in our own way. It's that infinite creative power, that one that creates everything. That power that has created each of us creates this next new experience, this next blossoming forth of the good. That's the truth of what we are. This good is unfolding now, differently for each of us, but in that same wonderful unfoldment for all of us. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the good, I'm grateful for the wonderful ways that the law is responding. I'm grateful for the willingness of each one here to engage with new possibilities, to surrender doubt and invite in something new and wonderful. And so with gratitude for all of this good, I speak this word and I release it into that same creative law that has always said yes. And I, I know that it's once again set loose saying yes to this. And so I let it be. And so it is. Mm. Deep breath in. Let your awareness come back to your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes. Open your eyes as Deb does another song for us. You can see the top of the mountain. It's right there in your reach. You always say, go for your dream. What you preach, hope and inspiration, they'll show you the way. Grab this moment of truth if you really want what you say. Footsteps out on the road, 
road rises up to meet it and that dream that was a heavy load gets lighter as you feed it so don't give up don't give up Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. Thanks. Mm. What a blessing you all are today. Uh, for the wisdom shared today, because I want to honor everybody's time, it's already a little bit uh, a little bit after. Um, if you have something that you'd like to give voice to, you'd like to share with the group, go ahead and paste it into the chat right now. I'm going to put one in there now. This is uh, uh, Deb's blog. She has a, uh, a CD that she has released with the Steps of Practical Prayer. And uh, the story about it is uh, in that post, uh, as is the uh, way that you can get to the CD if you'd like to do that. And turn it over to Sarah now for the offering. New Thought Philadelphia is all about spreading the love. Our community is supported by your contributions. The gift you share helps fund our work in the world and the way you shine your light spreads the love. We are grateful for every way you share. We don't have a basket today, but there is a donate button on the website to make a donation by credit card or PayPal or Cash App or Venmo. You can also mail a check to our office in Ardmore. The offering affirmation is on the screen. We'll say the affirmation together. I live in the abundant universe. I am one with the infinite source of all good. I am a center of the of the Enjoy the richness of my life. Bless my gifts. I share my gifts with God and gratitude. I know that as I give, I do receive. So it is. So it is. So it is. Right. Well, let's sing this last song together and have some fun on your end. I'll see you bobbing up and down, sticking your hands up in the air. Stay strong and keep your faith alive by David Newman. May the grace of God bless men, every woman in this land. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Whatever comes to meet us, darkness won't defeat us stay strong and keep your faith alive some say the end is coming said our souls are running but i say stay strong and keep your faith alive let's all come together take care of each other stay strong and keep your faith alive here we go. Raise your hands, raise your hands in the air, in the air. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Take a stand, take a stand. Say a prayer, say a prayer. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Hand in hand, side by side, with hearts open wide. We'll stay strong faith alive. Help others find their way. Create a heaven here today. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Here we go. Raise your hands up in the air and stay strong and keep your faith alive. Take a step. Take a step. Say a prayer. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Well, it's times like this we need to remember what is real. And stay strong and keep your faith alive. United in our quest to spread love and happiness. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Everybody raise your hand up in Take a stand, take a 
stay. Say a prayer, say a prayer. Stay strong and keep your faith alive. Ram Ram Bolo, J Ram Ram Bolo, He Ram Ram Bolo. So much, so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Thank you, Deb. Thank you so much. Okay, let's uh, make another cacophony and uh, joyous May Day, May Day, May Day. Go ahead and unmute your microphone and virtually join hands and repeat after me. I stay strong. I, I, stay, I strong. stay strong. Stay strong. Oh. My faith is alive. My faith is alive. I shine my light. I shine my light. I share the love. I share the love. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Perfect. Just I love the kazoo. Thank you too. Beautiful. Uh, uh, it's good to see you all. Good meditation, Joe. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Happy everyone. Day. That was all the presentations. Yeah, that was great. Talk, was fun. I got to go water the azaleas that I planted a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so dry. It's worse to do. Yeah. <laughs> have a great day. See you. Yeah. Everybody have a great Sunday. You yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Is yeah. yeah. that lovers and friends in Vegas that you're going to? Hell yeah! How did okay. you know? Yeah. Sarah, I was going to ask you what festival I'm so i gotta excited. check it out it's like What's my it middle school it's like my all the artists that i listened to it in middle school and like ninth grade all came together for one mega festival so what's it called lovers and friends and where is it is it Las in las vegas, vegas. vegas, yeah, vegas, baby. vegas baby i've <laughs> never been to vegas happen. yeah so. I want to see Carlos Santana. Very different. I'm trying to imagine middle school Sarah listening to that music. <laughs> oh, it was completely inappropriate. I listen to the music now and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. But I'm still excited. <laughs> those, were, those were fun years of music, Sarah. So, hey. You it was know? definitely a vibe. Let's call yeah. it that. It so, was middle, so middle school. So what? What years with, I mean, you're like a baby, but anyway. well, I, okay. So like 2000, I would call the, the music from this era is probably like 2002, which was probably like my seventh grade, six or 20 six. years ago. Okay. Yeah. So like 2002 to 2006 is like the crux of the music, I would say. So okay. like, yeah, like 12 to 16 year old Sarah is about to like have a blast. <laughs> That's very That's exciting. It's yeah. the okay. other day. Is very um, different. Yeah. Kendall went weird. to see a Pink Floyd tribute concert. That's cool. <laughs> and she oh, can, but this is, is like how my daughter does things because she thinks that everything that she hears now is new to me. <laughs> so we're driving in the car and she's like, oh my God, mom, we went to see this Pink Floyd tribute concert. She goes, it was awesome. She goes, have you ever heard of the song Wish You Were Here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, really? She goes, it's like my absolute all-time favorite now. And I'm like, you realize you that I did listen to that like back in the 70s, Kendall? <laughs> you realize that I did actually see Pink Floyd live, like the Pink Floyd? And it was like, 
<laughs> oh my god, you did! <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I remember, I remember camping out. Remember those days where you actually yes. like, bought tickets and you would camp mm -hmm. out. Yeah. To buy to the buy tickets or to be yes. at the show? Yeah, to buy the tickets. Buy yes. the tickets. Uh, buy the tickets. We were and general admission for... and you'd go really early and party all day in the parking lot to get into yep. the uh -huh. first. Mm -hmm. Did she see several species by any chance? Was that the name of the Pink Floyd tribute band, Joe? Um, I'll have to ask her. It was in Salt Lake City in Utah, so I, I have no idea. Yeah, they're my friends. They're amazing. Like, What they're is it called really again? several species i'm gonna text they're, her and ask her yeah they're amazing i want it to be interesting because they are like phenomenal and they play everywhere and oh, she said it was phenomenal she's like the guitar player was like amazing i, I don't know yeah. we'll see and they have so a female jane, jane where did you see where did you see pink floyd where did you see it um philadelphia okay i think what is now the spectrum no, yeah. it was outside and it was raining. And I went with it my roommate home. at the time. It the was man. pouring down rain. And we just, somebody gave us a trash bag and we just poked two holes in the top. And we just sat outside in the pouring yeah. rain with a little trash bag over our heads. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. cool. I saw the wall. I saw the wall concert in LA. That was pretty oh, nice. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. That yes. was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And everybody, everybody got like every everybody got their purses and their pockets and everything gone through and they were checking for everything they even opened my lipstick i mean it was crazy mm -hmm. and then we got into the center it was a, a, a la activity whatever it was wherever it was and then as soon as they started everybody lit up it was so <laughs> <laughs> i already i don't know where they were putting stuff but everybody we went, lit up. <laughs> we went with my friend's um old neighbor that she grew up with and he was a cop and he was off duty and he's like just sitting there smoking weed with everybody, like, yeah, okay. I was like, <laughs> was what crazy. happens here stays here. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> oh. It was fun yeah, to yeah, watch yeah. Linda's circuit start to lock up when Sarah mentioned that she was in middle school in a year that started with a two. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, well, guys! You know, I didn't ask to be born when I was born. I understand? It's just. But you know, I, I, somebody said something on somewhere the other day that was. It's like, well, that was 40 years ago. They were thinking like, you know, the late, late nineties or something, 40 years ago. It's like, that was the seventies, yeah. you know, or some like, oh, remember back in the eighties? Yeah, I do. And that was like, thir I, it was so long ago. I can't even, I, I can't, time is so yeah. strange because it yeah. feels like it just happened. And yet it was, I mean, 2022, it, 2002, that was 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's mind boggling to me the way time is like, yeah, Sarah, what, what um, well, that'll be so fun, Sarah. Have a blast. You're going to have a great time. time. It's, it's Vegas is fun. very different. So I've never been Be prepared uh, the, for that. The only thing I really want to do other than go to the concert is go to Meal Wolf, which is like that. It's like mm -hmm. a just a I don't know how to say it other than it's like a psychedelic trippy experience where you go in and it's like different rooms and different rooms and each thing is completely different. It's like going to be a feast for my eyes. Um, that's the only other thing I really want to do in Vegas. Like I'm not really keen on losing all my money at gambling tables or anything, you know, don't go to go win then don't lose win. Yeah. Or and go stay in away from the Elvis wedding chapel. I don't care if you think there's like a really your Mary soulmates yourself. there at that concert. Just stay away from the Elvis wedding chapel. Oh yeah, I'm not going to get married, guys. <laughs> no, Nobody's no getting married in Vegas. Although this would make great social media pictures. There would be Sarah at three in the morning, like, woohoo! I don't know, guys. I don't know. Just, just for professional purposes, you have to go watch the Fountains at the Bellagio. The yeah. Fountains oh, at the Bellagio. Yeah. Yeah. The fountain in front of the Bellagio, and say, why is this happening in the middle of the desert? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Cirque du Soleil is amazing too. You might want to put that on your list if you can. Well, that's that's a show. Like, yeah, they that's tour. A, yeah, that's a they specific tour. show. So. The Bellagio fountains are not going to come to Philly. We're no. um, we're leaving Friday, and we'll get there at like nine p.m. on Friday night. Just enough time to like drop off our stuff, and then just like go mm -hmm. out in the world and check it out. 
And then Saturday we have all day and then Sunday's the concert. And then we fly back at like noon on Monday. So uh, yeah, my, boss, is- my boss said you don't need more than four days in Vegas. Because originally I had it planned as I think it was like five and then leave on the sixth day. And he's like, absolutely not. No. You don't, you don't like, need that long in Vegas. I was like, your okay. boss is right. You don't. Didn't know. <laughs> I was like, yeah. You'll be there just long enough. It's fun. I'm excited. It's an experience. Let's put it that way. It is an experience. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Definitely a new go. one. Ooh, I got to stop.